Uh, hold on a second. I'm hearing good things about you. All right. Is everybody looking good here? Everybody ready? 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 Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can take your mask off while you talk. And yeah. you, you are good to begin. Hi, I'm Courtney Boyd. Um, I've spent my whole summer at Good U Center and Good U Pool. Um, I went from not knowing how to swim at all to go knowing how to swim at the highest level inside of the pool. There you go. Right there. Um, I'm so happy that they're adding a new roof to the um, pool, and there will, it won't be as dirty as you can see it right now. Um, um, it's my pleasure to introduce Mary de Blasio. He threw me a curveball there, that dirty pool comment. We're going to work on that right away. Courtney, I want everyone over here to acknowledge Courtney did an amazing job, didn't he? <laughs> Courtney, you said you were nervous. You didn't seem nervous. It was for, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Yeah. You did good. He's too cool to answer. I like that. Everybody, this is a really beautiful moment for Staten Island. And for the children of Staten Island, aren't they beautiful? Let's give them a round of applause. And the families of Staten Island, this is one of those moments where we make things better for people by investing in families, investing in children, investing in the community. That's what Staten Island Week is all about. That's why we're doing City Hall in your borough, to fix things that need to be fixed, to right some wrongs, to bring some investment to a borough that often hasn't gotten its fair share. Now. A lot of good people here. A lot of people do a lot of good for the Staten Island community. First of all, thank you to all our friends at the Children's Aid Society for the great work they do. <laughs> Special thank you to someone who does so much to make the Good Hue Center great. Eileen Pappert, thank you. <laughs> and a shining star here on Staten Island in terms of making sure our kids get the best education, what they deserve. Principal Dan Singleton, thank you. So, a long time ago, Jimmy and Otto, Jimmy Otto and I talked about how we needed to have an opportunity for Staten Island kids in particular to swim year round. This is a beautiful pool. And this is a beautiful facility. But Jimmy made the point, and I agree with him immediately, we needed more. And it was going to take an investment. And Jimmy will tell you, because he loves to recount all the steps along the way. Sometimes there's a few missteps in there, but we get there in the end. We needed to find the right place, the right way to do it. And this is the right place. Supporting this community center, creating an enclosed pool that kids and families can use year-round. And I am pleased to say we are putting our money where our mouth is in this year's budget, $52.9 million to make this place beautiful. That is what we call real money. And we believe this is something kids deserve, families deserve, Staten Island deserves but it's also the kind of investment we need to make as we bring New York City back. We've all been through a crisis we could not have imagined, but we are coming back because Staten Islanders don't give up, New Yorkers don't give up. We just fight back. And to bring ourselves back, we've got to invest. We've got to do things bigger, better than ever before. And I always say it has to be a recovery for all of us. That means it needs to reach every corner of this city. So this is the kind of investment that makes a difference. So everyone, are you going to like being able to swim? I want to ask our panel of experts, are you going to like being able to swim even when it's snowing out? Does that sound cool? 
That's what's going to happen for the kids here and so many other kids and families. And I want to bring forward the guy who made it possible. You know, uh, in public life, as in the rest of life, give credit where credit is due. Uh, Jimmy Otto spoke up. He knew what was the right thing to do, and he would not let it go. And I made the mistake a long time ago giving him my cell number, uh, something I've regretted since. Uh, and he uses it, he uses it a lot, and he uses it to great effect to help the people of Staten Island. So this is a day where we really need to give him a thanks. This would not have happened without him. Borough President Jimmy Otto. You know, I have to say, and Mayor, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe your cell number is the same cell number that you have had. That. Don't talk about you that. You have had for a long, long time. Oh, my time. God. So check your old phones, kids. <laughs> Call the mayor. Uh, not helpful. <laughs> so uh, let, me just, let me just repeat that so people far and wide across Staten Island can hear it. $52.9 million in fiscal year 2022 city budget for the Children's Aid Society to build a new community center, enclose its outdoor swimming pool on the grounds of Good U, and in addition, city funding will complete the acquisition of the additional 11 acres of Good U property to be forever preserved. Man. Man, that is a mouthful. That is a glorious mouthful. Let me, let me tell you folks who don't know that uh, Bill de Blasio and I know each other, if not 30 years, certainly uh, 25 years. We were colleagues together in the city council. We were on the budget negotiating team, the leadership team. We have been together in meetings, in council hearings. We've been together at numerous press conferences, uh, during his tenure at mayor, as mayor, and he will tell you that whenever he gives me the microphone, uh, it's unpredictable. It's an unpredictable happening. So I want to allay the mayor's <laughs> angst and tell him right out the outset that there are two points to what I want to say, two goals I have today. One is to tell you good folks how we got here, and secondly, to tell you why it is so, so important. The first point, how we got here. It's a long journey, but it's one that I want to talk about because it speaks to resilience and perseverance. It speaks to owning sort of missteps that the mayor alluded to. And it speaks to keep getting after it until you get it right. So there was a decision made 20 years ago that Staten Island might be the home of the final Croc Center. Croc Center are these wonderful facilities that are put in economically disadvantaged communities that are, are community centers and they have uh, indoor pool and activities. And we resurrected it when I got to Borough Hall in 2014. It was dormant for nine years. And we resurrected it and we tried to get it done and we failed. We didn't. And I was angry. And the mayor and I had a really candid private conversation and to his credit, he owned it. And he said some things to me privately. And then he went out publicly at a town hall meeting a, a few days later and said those very same things publicly to all of Staten Island. And at that time, he committed to building an indoor facility, an indoor pool for the kids of the North Shore and the kids of Staten Island. And that process started. The mayor put in $25 million, put in $50 million, put in $100 million. And it was clear that we were never going to build that aquatic center for anything less than $250 million. And there was a dispute about the location. And my chief of staff, Jason Rzewski, came in around the holidays time, around Christmas, and he said, Jim, he said, boss, we're in gridlock. What is it you want to do? You want to keep fighting? What else do you care about? What else do you want to get done? Maybe we should pivot. And it was one of those moments where you had to sit and say, am I going to fight for the sake of winning, or am I going to do the right thing by the community that elected me? And shortly thereafter, the mayor and I had dinner, and I said, Mayor, the pivot. How about we pivot? He said, what are you talking about? I said, I think there's a higher purpose for this money. And from that has come this quest 
to use this money for the kids and for Staten Island in general. This morning we announced that there'll be a new diabetes center at the Gotham Vanderbilt site on the North Shore. There's lots of good things happening as a result of the decision to pivot, one of which is this project. 2014, the great Deputy Borough President Ed Burke introduces me to the good folks at Goodyear. This is a passion of Eddie Burke's, this institution. And we start having these conversations. And then there's a movement, Save Goodyear Park, save the, save the Woods. And Eddie gets me in the room, and he is a clever one, Mr. Mayor, that Ed Burke. And he gets me going, and I become passionate about Save Goodyear Woods. So I make the mayor an offer he could not refuse. Mr. Mayor, I will put $6 million of Borough Hall money, which is the taxpayer's money, not from the little Jimmy Otto bank account. He certainly doesn't have that. And I say, I will put six. Why don't you match me with, mind you, match me with 12? And the mayor did. And we put $18 million to save the woods. I was so enchanted by this institution and Eileen and Dan and all the good people here that we said, you know what, we've done good, let's do great. And that's when the conversation started about what we could do on the community center and the enclosure of the pool and the mayor was on board. Now, why is this so important? This is so important because how many years ago, Dan? 30. 30 years ago, there was a kid who was here, just like these kids. And he benefited from this experience. It was life altering. That kid grew up, went back to his home community, and is the principal of PS31. And if you know anything about Staten Island and education on Staten Island, you know that PS31 has unique challenges. I went I visited early on when I was borough president. It was a different principal, good principal, whatever. I went in, toured, great, okay. And then a short while after, my staff had me going out. And I said, why am I going to 31? We were there. New principal, you have to meet him. And we spent an hour and a half. And to an individual on the borough hall staff, we watch Dan Singleton with those kids. They love him, and he loves them. And I was immediately impressed. Dan and I don't talk often, but we are friends. And we talk about life. And during some of the hardest times that this country has seen in the last few years, Dan and I had the most honest, raw conversations. And he said things to me, and I said things to him, and he said things to me that I could not understand. Experiences that he went through as a black man that I will never understand. But I listened, I tried to emote, and tried to show some empathy, and tried to let him know that although I can't change things, I hear him. My dad was my hero for a long time. I have a very complicated relationship with him, but I think we all want our fathers to be our heroes. My father was a workaholic. And he was my hero. I haven't had many heroes. I don't use that term lightly. Dan Singleton is a hero of mine. Every day he dedicates his life to improving the lives of the kids who need it most. And Dan Singleton is the man he is today. And my God, what a man he is. Because as a kid, he was here. So when you say... Why do you keep running into that wall, Borough Hall staff? When you say, why do you keep pestering the mayor? When they ask, why do you try hard to have a relationship with colleagues like the mayor, who maybe ideologically you don't see eye to eye? It's to be able to look Dan Singleton in the face and in the eyes and say, I hear you, my friend, and we're going to do everything we can for this institution that did so much for you. That's why today is a great day. That's why today is a legacy day. I've gone on too long, and Mr. Mayor, I hope you don't mind, but you got to hear from Dan and hear from his own mouth, his own words, what this institution meant to him. Because 30 years from now, there's going to be another Dan Singleton right there in that pool 
is going to do great things for this borough. Dan? Can I take this off? Can you guys hear me? Is it, are any of my students here? We got to change that. I got to get some of my kids here. So uh, when I was, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words. It means a lot to me um, as, as spoken. I wrote some things down because I didn't want to forget anything because just wow. Um, I remember walking around here as a kid. I'm going to try to get through this without breaking down. It's really hard for me, um, but I'm going to do it. So you cannot mention my story without mentioning the Goodyear Center. Simple as that. I attended the after school program every day here from grades two to five every single day. I attended the summer program, which some of you are doing right now, every year from second grade to fifth grade. I learned to swim in this very pool. I had the opportunity to play basketball and baseball for the first time ever on that field and in that gym, which made it real for me. I watched it on TV all the time, and it wasn't real for me until I put on a uniform. And the Goodyear Center is the first place I ever put on a uniform. My dreams became real here. After I was a camper here, I became a counselor here. So I was a good you counselor, like, raise your hands, count, any counselors here? I was a good you counselor here every summer that I wasn't in college. Every summer I came here and I worked here. I worked, so you ask me, ask me what has good you provided for me? It provided safety. When you come here, do you feel safe? I can't hear you guys. When you come here, do you feel safe? Good you provided safety for me. Those counselors took care of me and they made sure I ate and they made sure I had something to drink when I made it up Heart Attack Hill. Anybody ever walk up Heart Attack Hill over there? Yeah, yeah. Some of the old school people know Heart Attack Hill, man. That was tough, right? Uh, academic support. Now, if you come here after school, you cannot go outside unless you finish your homework, right? Academic support every day, variety, always something different to do, new experiences, camping overnight, boating, cooking, arts and crafts, those things. Most of all, stability and love. When I came here, I knew I was safe. Day in and day out, I knew I was safe. Miss Eileen, she raised me. Raise your hand if you know Miss Eileen. Please, Miss Eileen. Bring her up here, please. Give Miss Eileen a round of applause. Stand right here. You can stand here, I'm tall. Oh my, oh, jeez, get that, please. Oh, somebody get that. Oh, I don't want to forget what I got to say. Miss Eileen, when I saw you, I felt happy. I knew you were going to care for us. I knew it. You're going to protect us. You made me feel like I belonged here. Thank you for that. You were a good, he was a great kid. It was easy to do. I'm so happy that she's here today to watch this upgrade take place. And she's still here. And she's still making lives change. Good you gave me tools. Good, me, good you gave me the chance to be who I am. I love Good Hugh. I'm so happy that so many of you get to feel what I felt. You simply cannot mention Dan Singleton without mentioning Good Hugh and Miss Eileen.
Thank you so much for listening, guys. Enjoy your time here. Because it ends, but you can always come back home. Thank you so much. You are. So I want to um, I want to thank uh, a couple more folks. Um, again, I, w I want to I want to thank a couple of people on the Borough Hall Borough Hall staff, Borough Hall team, uh, Borough Hall family. Uh, Deputy Borough President Ed Burke, who is uh, maybe coming to the end of his tenure in in city government after a really long time. His fingerprints are on a lot of really great things in this borough. You may not see his face. You may not know his name as, uh, as readily as others, but he has done a remarkable work for nearly three decades. And this one is for you, Eddie Burke. God bless you, my friend. Jason Rzewski, my brother, who speaks uh, common sense to me. Thank you. Well done. Cover and move, brother. Cover and move. Eileen, Eddie Burke says you are the face and the heart of good, a good you. Don Shacknai, for the, all the conversations. Don, I, I wonder if the look of disbelief is off your face yet. <laughs> Yolanda McBride, Michelle Avila, David Sweeney, all good people at Children's Aid and good you. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Phoebe Boyer, the CEO and president of Children's Aid Society. So I think actually all of my remarks have largely been summed up by watching Dan and Eileen, in part because that's why Children's Aid exists, right? To make kids feel safe, to help you succeed and thrive, to build on the relationships. And there has never been an 18 months period where we have needed to feel safe and have relationships like the one we have been through and are going through and coming out of with a big fight. So on behalf of our agency, the Good Hue Advisory Committee, and especially the youth, family, staff, and alumni who call Good Hue home, we'd like to thank Mayor de Blasio and Borough President Otto for their extraordinary, and I need to say it again because I haven't quite gotten over it, $52.9 million commitment to this community. The work, the work that we do at Children's Aid is not possible without the leaders who support it through their words and through their actions. Today's announcement is the culmination of efforts that began more than a decade ago. Our priority, as we have shown, has always been to make sure that children and families on the North Shore have the access to the best possible programs and facilities and people like Eileen. Goodhue has a long and storied history on this island and the funding today will allow us to build um, that future for generations to come. The center opened in 1912 and it has been a pillar of the community ever since. Generations of kids like Dan, many others are here today as well, have known that they could come through these doors and find a safe and welcoming and nurturing environment where they could learn and they could play, and man, do they want to get ready to play, and make lifelong friendships. There might not be, and I think you've seen it, a more powerful example of the power of Goodhue than there is in our director, Eileen Pappert. She started at Goodhue as a summer camp counselor in 1976. She moved to Staten Island shortly thereafter and started her family here. And she has been the center's director since 1989. And we would not be here, and this announcement would not be possible if it were not for her unending advocacy for Staten Island's children and families. Now a picture is worth a thousand words and you saw the picture of Dan and Eileen and that pretty much cov covers it. But Eileen embodies the mission of our agency. We believe that all children of this borough deserve a place like Goodhue 
where they can balance education and recreation and make memories that they will carry with them for the rest of their lives. Today is the beginning of a brand new chapter for a beloved place with an amazing story. And the, we believe the new center and the year-round pool will benefit countless children and families on Staten Island for decades to come. In considering the future of Goodhue, we listen to the people of this community. That is why we worked with the city's parks department to permanently preserve 38 acres so that this land would always be shared by every person on this island. Thank you. And moving forward, we are committed to listening to those same friends and neighbors as we work together to build the best possible good hue. We also want to acknowledge and send our sincerest gratitude to the other elected and government officials who supported us over the last 10 years in conceiving, financing, and executing this vision. As I look out at this crowd, it's a gift to see so many young people in attendance and alumni. Just last week, we ended summer camp here. After transitioning to remote camp in the summer of 2020 because of COVID, we have been ecstatic about welcoming back our youth this summer. Eileen told me earlier today, of all her summers, this has been the most transformative. These young people were able to compete in their own Olympic games, to swim in this renovated pool, and to catch up on learning that will prepare them for their return to school in just a few short weeks. It's programs like what happens at Goodhue that make me so excited about the future of this place and of this city. In ways large and small, this center is impacting children's lives on a daily basis. At Children's Aid, we pride ourselves on being a part of each child's journey every step of the way. In the same way, we will be here for this community in the days, weeks, months, and years to come as we complete this incredible project. I did say it might take five years, and Courtney said five days. It'd be nice. Um, though we've done some incredible things over the last year. But once again, I just want to thank the mayor and the borough president and all of you for being here. We know that this great day would not have been possible without so much tireless work and all those things that happen behind the scenes. We are really honored and humbled to share the vision of Goodhue and the commitment to the community, preserving 38 acres of parkland, enclosing the pool for year-round access, and building a new community center. We look forward to a future that is bright for children and families across this borough and this city. And with that, I believe yes. there's a cannonball contest, contest. contest happening. Time for a contest. Eddie Burke. Right. Throw him in. <laughs> Who's that big kid on the corner? At? That's Ed Burke. Where are we setting up for this here? This is exciting. I think that we're going to, the kids are going to volunteer. They're going to come over here. Where's the, come on, someone. And I believe mm -hmm. that you are judging this. You know where we're doing this. <laughs> where are we setting up for this? It looks like we're setting up right, right here. here. Yep. Okay, and we're going to have a group jump in. You'll judge the biggest splash, and we've got some prizes right, to give away. I'll jump in. Watch it one after another. What's how, how does this happen? I think we're doing all at once.
Watch again. Watch carefully this time. Come on, you just jumped. Okay, 